And then we go to Officer Bar Brady in the back in the trainer's room with the varsity blondes, Brian Pillman Jr. and Griff Garrison. Marvez's pitch set the, com the tone as completely phony and amateurish because he recites a prepared line that he has memorized with no feeling, and it gives off the vibe that this is complete caca that we're imparting to you here. And then Brian Pillman had to stand there doing an interview while Griff Garrison held a ice pack to his supposed injured eye where MJF punched him with the ring and made fake faces <laughs> about how much pain he was in. He's obviously never had a black eye before because you don't work it like that, kid. And, and I guarantee you, I've, as a matter of fact, well, I've mentioned this before, but one of the better black eyes I ever got cost me about 20 stitches on my cheekbone and my whole eye swelled up shut and it was all purple for fucking two weeks and I didn't want to press a goddamn hard bag of ice onto that. It didn't make it feel better when I was pressing sharp, hard-sided ice onto that or when Castor and Bivens the I guess it was Castor and Bivens, the acclaimed, right? They walk in, yeah, and they toss another bag at Griff Garrison, a bag of ice, and hit him in the face. And he, you got a black eye. You're not a paraplegic motherfucker. Are you an adult man? Apparently not. A guy walks in and throws a fucking bag of ice in your face, and I don't care if you got a black eye or a leg missing. You stand up and you attempt to swing at that motherfucker. He just stood there, sat there. And made a, a boo-boo face and started fake selling his fucking head again while Castor and Pillman plugged another match, did phony interaction with each other, and then the heels on the way out threw the flowers, the roses at him. This was just, this is why when they hit something like they did between Pillman and MJF, then they follow it up with something like this and we're back to children. We're back to fucking children. This was a pre-tape and should not have been allowed to air. Go ahead. I was just going to say, up to the MJF promo segment was an excellent episode of Dynamite. It's very much hit or miss after that. And, he, and there's, there's going to be people out there going, oh, you hear Cornette just hated and tore apart MJF and Pillman. No, I loved both their performances and thought that they deserved more backup amongst the periphery of people that were in, that should have been involved. And I critiqued it, but that was great. Yes, the first hour of the show, mostly wonderful. Second hour, went in a fucking porcelain throne. Tony Schiavone was in the ring, and he introduced the best faction in the world. So now the announcer endorses the heels. He didn't say self-proclaimed. He didn't say they claim to be. They call themselves, folks, these are the best, the best in the world. It's the heels. Then here comes the whole clown show out with that goofy music. Beat your meat. Beat, beat your meat. Beat your meat. It's fucking, God damn it. Um, they had Cutlet and knock a knock a knock the fuck off with them, which means there's eight of them. They're the, 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 the good for nothing brothers. There's the Hardly boys. There's twinkle toes. That's five. There's cutlet six. There's knock at the fuck off. There's seven. And of course, Don Fallis, who now has, he's got a tan. He switched the pink suit where he looked like a bottle of Pepto-Bismol for the powder blue. one. now he looks like a fucking Viagra. Balding Buck has a chain from his nose to his ear, hanging down. These two, the Hardly Boys, are the most uncool, unpierced, untattooed, Christian as fuck nitwits in the whole world, and he's out there trying to look like Lenny Kravitz or some shit. It's phony. Everybody, he's, he's not Malachi Black. He ain't committed to that. He ain't got tattoos all over his whole body. He ain't got shit pierced that we probably can't even see. He's not authentic. He's wearing clip-on bullshit. He got it Hot Topic where he and his brother buy their fucking personal 
vibrators. I didn't know they sold those at Hot Topic. You weren't aware of that, boy. You went to the mall in the late 70s. The only place you could get a vibrator for use in certain situations was at Spencer's Gifts or Hot Topic or one of those. They call them personal massagers. When you Before you were 21 and you couldn't go into a goddamn porn store, but you needed certain implements to make Saturday night turn out better, you went to Hot Topic or Spencer's Gifts. In New York, anyway. you can go to the porn stores before you're 21. All you got to do is go to Penn Station at night and you're hooked up. Well, I, if I were you, I'd boil the thing when you got it home before. <laughs> at least, at least all mine were brand new out of the box. But I didn't say it was on the ground. <laughs> I didn't say I took anything home. What are you trying to incriminate me with? I, just say, I didn't say it was on the ground. I'm just wondering where it's been recently held. Anyway, sure. it could have been the it could have been the one. That's why Twinkle Toes makes that face when his butt plug falls out. It could have been that one that you're picking up and carrying home with you. Anyway, um, I did see with all these guys standing in the ring. If in all seriousness, if Cutlet and Knock It Off weren't in the picture, it would be easier to take because not only are they dressed like idiots, but they have the well, the one's got the face shield and the other one's got the headset on, and they're just they're they're there is no purpose for them other than visual comedy. Can I just say something where you yeah. and I will disagree, and I know it in advance because I had a very okay. similar thought that you just had. And I understand why you feel the way you do, and I'm not taking anything away from that or saying that you're wrong. I understand why you feel the way you do. But with that said, I agree with what you just said, but I would get rid of every one of them but Omega. And even if you want to keep Omega with Callus, I think Omega, just being the usual goofy Omega character, I think he's a lot more palatable when he doesn't have all this other stupidity around him, and it all drags him down. It's kind it of, could work if he was the lone goof, is what you're saying. I'm just saying, if you had Kenny Omega, you you wouldn't necessarily make him in charge of the fucking NWO with fucking Virgil and Marcus Bagwell. <laughs> and that's what this fucking feels like. The Young Bucks are playing it up. And by the way, look at the reactions the Elite are getting coming out. They're not getting fans really booing them heavy or anything. I think the fans are really into Omega. I think the Bucks' heels is just lame. I think the Good Brothers, boy, I don't know what you call it. Just it's 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 not go home heat. It's I hate X Pac heat. I don't use that term, but it's just like why are you here? You're wasting all of our time heat. And then there's Nakazawa and Cutlet who are just wastes. But if it was just Omega acting silly, I'd be okay with it. But this is the worst fucking faction in wrestling. It's awful. Next to the Dark Order. This well, is awful. But it's about to get worse. <clears throat> because they introduced their newest member, Adam Cole. He did his old entrance. I wish he had the old music. That's a, that old music had the vibe, and it was perfect for his boom and his Adam Cole baby, and he had the spots in and everything. I did notice that Twinkle Toes was acting even sillier than usual when Adam was coming in trying to get some attention away from they, They've got to know that these real stars coming in are drastically taking their spotlight. But Adam Cole, how many good things have we said about him? And uh, uh, the people didn't like it that I said, why did they put him in a fucking group the, for his first night in? And everybody, well, don't you know, he's always been in the elite and he's always... No, you know who knows that? The people that are already there. The choir already knows the words to the fucking hymns. And not even all of them. But nobody else, no, it's, it's been five years he's been in NXT leading the Undisputed Era. People could give a shit, and many people don't even know that they used to be together in the indies. But regardless... You get a guy the level of Cole with the buzz that he had, and you bring him in, and you put not only put him in a group and make him one of the boys instead of a standout right at the start, but then he's been put in a position twice where he gets upstaged by a bigger star coming out on the on a fucking entrance. Think about this. Where else could you have put Adam Cole in a position we're on the pay-per-view and here he gets big entrances. One is a surprise and one they knew he was there. And he, within minutes, is upstaged by a bigger stars, bigger entrance. 
Adam Cole gets in the ring, and the first thing he does is tell Tony Schiavone off for looking at Britt Baker wrong, or if he looks at Britt Baker wrong. But I know you've been close to her, Tony. Tony's fucking 60. Does he not trust his own girlfriend not to want to blow a 60-year-old announcer? And he keep get out of the ring, nerd. Adam Cole is 30-something, looks 20-something. He's calling a 60-year-old man a nerd. It sounded like children again. They berated Tony, and it took a full minute for the 60-year-old man to be bullied out of the ring by the fucking wrestler that's calling him a nerd. <laughs> Tony wasn't going to go. If I, 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 Tony knew one thing about me. If I told a motherfucker to get out of the fucking ring and was in front of the people and he didn't go, there was a racket coming. Right? But they they just, what are they going to do about it? He, that's what Tony should have said. What are you going to do about it? That would have fucking puzzled him. But anyway, Adam Cole then did a great promo. A better promo than anybody in the elite, including their manager, Don Fallis, has done yet because it was all serious. He's well-spoken. He's trying to get him over. Now, the problem is he's putting all these guys over and he's standing in front of a collection of stooges and clowns and comedy figures, and he's a diamond and a cow pie, but he did a, I, I wrote, this was the best verbal performance ever by anyone in this group. Problem is only what it, the product that's standing behind him that he's got to sell. But then, so he has his say. And then Twinkle Toes gets the microphone and tries to follow that. So already we've shifted off Adam Cole. Well, thanks. But now here's this guy. And Twinkle Toes says, you know, the one thing I hate about the other night is I hate interruptions. And instantly, my, how fortunate. They must have been running low on time. They probably went over. Because Danielson's music hits as soon as the word interruptions comes out. Even the uninitiated to television production would have said some motherfucker had to have his finger on the button to play the music that quick. As soon as they heard that key word, I hate interruptions, music. And here comes Brian Danielson, and he's over like God, and the people are loving him. And he makes an entrance. So Adam Cole now is, is back in, in, in the group. Because Twinkle Toes, the boss of this whole thing, says, hey, guys, can I have the room? And he gets all the heels to get out of the ring so that he and Danielson can be in the ring so we know who's running the show now in the, in the elite. And it ain't Adam Cole. And then Twinkle Toes goes into full phone sex voice and starts his, whatever he's going to... And Danielson just grabs the microphone and asks everybody, hey, do you want to see Brian Danielson versus... He didn't say Twinkle Toes. He should have. Kenny Omega and the crowd goes, yes, yes, yes. And then Danielson tells Twinkle Toes off as he should have. And then they get in a schmoz and the heels get in. And now we go back to AEW every week. The heels jump in, but here comes Jungle Boy and Christian Cage, Dino Douche, the usual suspects. Everybody comes out in a clump. Everybody hits several dives and Brian Danielson hits Cutlet with the knee because Danielson gets the last move and they play the music. It was complete sports entertainment. And <sighs> Brian Danielson's over and they want to see him against uh, Olivier and Adam Cole's over and they want to just see him period. But this was a complete sports entertainment segment with too much shit going on, with too many people, with too much interaction, and was the exact opposite of what got over about CM Punk's debut and everything he's done since then, which has been the simplest things that have been done on AEW television involving the fewest number of people. So that way you actually see, acknowledge, register, and remember what goes on. This was... This was self-indulgent to use these two stars in this manner to interact with your fucking friend from Japan that used to carry your bags around and your friend from high school that used to do flips on your trampoline and etc. So there you go.
What'd you think? I don't want to go too long on this because we got to <laughs> wrap this up eventually, but I will disagree with you. I did not like Adam Cole's promo. I don't know if he was nervous, but it felt to me like, you know, I saw him a lot in NXT. It felt off. It felt like he was a little nervous. Um, he repeated, not repeated, it's his catchphrase, but I don't remember him saying Bebe twice within 30 seconds before. I thought it was a little bit of a crutch that he went back to. I May think he was thrown off because he was trying hard to sell those guys as being more than they were instead of worried about concentrating on himself, which is what he should have been doing. He didn't feel like himself from NXT. I'll say that. I didn't like it. To your earlier point, yeah, Danielson comes out and it's just Omega or Omega and Callus in there. There you got something. But when it's Omega with the fucking late era NWO, that's what this fucking is. That's what Gallows and Anderson and the fucking Young Bucks are with their two fucking stooges. It's late era NWO. It's really bad. And I don't see Omega the and same way you do. you actually had Omega tell fucking Adam Cole, go ahead and get out of the ring, come back in for the schmas. Big boys are talking now. Adam Cole just got there this week. I'm not at all impressed with Adam Cole and AEW so far. Limited uh, what we've seen, but the pay-per-view debut and then this, I I don't know. You I'm know, not, you know I'm not feeling it at all, and I liked him in NXT. I'm not feeling it so far. I'll tell you what we're going to see, and then we're going to cover this last match and be done with it. We are seeing now the difference in the people that come into the company because they want to join their friends and have fun and the people that come into the company because they want to make a difference and draw money, and they have creative control that they are using. That's where we're seeing the difference. Punk is about business, and it looks like poor Adam Cole and maybe Brian Danielson are about just having some fun. Because I can't believe either one of them thought that if they'd have thought it through that this was... <laughs> they got great debuts because people just wanted to fucking cheer them if they're walking down the street, but the way that they have been used... I don't see how that any of them thought that through and thought that this would all be great to just be in the middle of this mix of multiple people, most of whom matter not in anything. 